Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to Totally Jacob. I'm here with Chucky today and he is in his He's in a mood. He's in a mood because <laughs> he's in his rampant seat of Chucky mood because we are going to be talking about the return of Chucky to television. Yes, Chucky season 2 is out. Well, the first episode is out and we're going to review it together. So, spoiler alert, we're going to be talking Chucky. Now, Chucky, um Listen, how are you enjoying your new show? He's not going to talk because obviously he wants, he's faking to be a, a doll. But then as soon as the camera's off, he starts talking and blabbering. He won't stop talking as soon as the camera's off. So anyway, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, you can also join me on Patreon, Super Dacob, all spelled together for extra perks. Uh, I live stream every Saturday on my main Super Dacob channel. I have several channels, but this is my pop culture channel where you've landed right now. And uh, I live stream every Saturday, right? Where I also have my live chats. And my co-conspirators are right with me here on the sidebar in the chat. So I will be reading the chats as well as I go along. Now, be warned, y'all. Spoilers coming up ahead. So I've decided to um, bring out the seed of Chucky Chucky from Chick or Treat Studios instead of the Good Guys doll, just because usually I, I always kind of talk with Good Guys Chucky. But in my videos, but I was like, you know, to commemorate this, he's, he's, he's the scarier version, aren't you? Yeah. So I was like, you know what? He's back slashing away. He already killed a kid. <laughs> so I'm like, you deserve to be in your scorched version for this video. Um, okay, so where to begin? Well, what an episode. Now, first of all, huge fan of season one, huge fan of Don Mancini's Chucky world. A lot of people are not are not fans of Seed of Chucky, the movie. It's my favorite from uh the entire i love all of them by the way just for the record i love each and every one of the chucky movies but seed of chucky is hated by so many people they think it's not scary enough it's too funny too comical it's because it's so comical that it has this meta level it actually is really scary but it's also wonderfully amazing i mean and, and just also sometimes people that don't like seed of chucky you know maybe they're not into the fact that chucky's child is gender fluid maybe there's a little bit of homophobia in there as well in some people eh, you know just saying but anyway so love season one i got this great um uh, blu-ray set uh, with the lenticular cover so it kind of like has this three-dimensional effect with an extra book in there postcards uh the back but it's also super cool so i have this edition of the first season so i rewatched the whole thing before i started the second season and now the first episode begins right where season one ended and where season one ended is well basically andy is leaving the frankenstein movie showcase where a lot of people have been killed by chucky chucky has managed to project his soul into a ton of other good guy dolls um and he's supposed to drive away the truck with the Chucky dolls to, to, to destroy them. But then at the end, plot twist for the first time in the TV show, we see Tiff, Tiffany, in her doll form. She kind of pops out with a gun and she's like, do what I tell you, I'm going to shoot you. So that's kind of one of the biggest cliffhangers. Now, season two begins right there. You know, he Andy's in the truck. All the Chucky dolls are with him. Tiffany's pointing the gun. Chuck, a couple of Chucky dolls exit from their boxes and they're talking to each other. But there's a strange thing happening. They don't seem to know who Andy is. Now, Andy is the kid that survived Chucky in the first Chucky movie in the late 80s. He's all grown up now. It's the same actor, by the way. So it's really cool to see him. And But the Chuckies don't remember. So it seems as though when Chucky... The real Chucky, Chucky, the OG Chucky, when he transfers his soul into uh, another doll, or, or the more he trans, I think there's a limited amount of times he can do it, but the more he kind of disperses his soul into other dolls, the less they are connected to the original Chucky, like they have less memory, perhaps. Um, or, or maybe Chucky has less control over them. Like he had a little bit less control over Nika. He was losing control over her. He was kind of jumping in and out of her body. So he's not that powerful uh, the more he spreads his soul thin between other bodies. But so the Chuckies don't seem to remember who Andy is. But they look, they look at him and they, 
It's so funny. I mean, it's actually really cute. I know this is like a horror slasher thing, but it's really cute. They look at him. They're like, who are you? You look familiar. And then the three Chuckies that are there, they start fighting with each other because one of the Chuckies is bald. Yeah, you, 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 were, you were bald. And um, and then the other Chuckies start making fun of him, like, oh, you're bald, ha, ha, ha. And then one of them says, well, you know, bald guys are better with chicks. And then they say, well, better be bald and have a small... And then he looks at small hands and, you know, and then they're kind of, the innuendos, the sexual innuendos are just like one pun or after the other while Tiffany is about to shoot Andy. So there's always this tension and drama, death about to happen while there's comedy as well, which to me, that's what Chucky is all about. But then some people really only want Chucky to be scary. Hence why the first episode was not liked by many people because, well, I don't want to say many, but a few of the reviews I've seen out there, people were not having this going back to Seed of Chucky type of narrative, uh, the meta aspect of it all. Now, they were shooting a movie in Seed of Chucky. So there was a Chucky movie being shot in a movie. You see where the meta is? Now, apparently that movie was never finalized because then Chucky came to life and we had the whole drama happening in that movie. But now in episode one of season two, there is a moment in the show where uh, Jake kind of looks into a house. Somebody's watching Bride of Chucky. And, no, wait, did that happen? Or I'm mixing this up with the Munsters. I just watched the Munsters movie as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> they were actually, no, 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 okay. <laughs> Let me not get ahead of myself. Lexi and her um, smaller sister, well, her smaller sister, you know, had issues with, with Chucky in the first season, but, uh, so she's super scared of dolls now. But um, her shrink gives her a Tiffany doll, well, before Tiffany's Tiffany, the clean version of, let's just call her the vanilla Tiffany, and says, here, this way you can fight your traumas. And I'm like, girl, you're not just giving the girl the bride of Chucky. So anyway, then Devin and, J and Jake do some research, and then they find out that the bride of Chucky, that the doll is from the bride of Chucky, the movie. And some people have issues with that. They say, like, how can it be? Now they're bringing in another meta moment where an actual episode of the saga of Chucky is now considered a movie. So is it canon or was it a movie? Then somebody else implied, well, no, it was not a movie. They're actually referencing the movie that was being shot in Seed of Chucky that never got finalized, really, where Tiffany and Chucky were together because they were shooting a movie the plot of Seed of Chucky was they're shooting a movie. So a little bit complicated and twisted. I personally wouldn't have any issues if the whole thing was a big movie. <laughs> like we find out at the end of like, I, I'm hoping we're going to get at least 10 seasons of Chucky. Probably won't, but one can dream. And like in the 10th season, we find out at the end and like, no, it was actually all just a movie. But then plot twist, it wasn't. And then it kind of keeps bouncing off. Now, some people find that lame. I just find that Brad Dorif, still the original voice of Chucky, he was also Charles, the real person in the 80s movie, and then he was the voice of Chucky throughout the movies. Um, he's back again as the voice of Chucky now. <laughs> I think it's so fascinating that everything is mixing and morphing, but yet so beautifully elegantly shot and filmed. I was saying this for season one. Season one has a beautiful, like with the budget that they had, I think they did a great cinematography moment. The camera work was exceptional. In some cases, it felt like a movie rather than a TV show. The lighting, the colors chosen. Now, there's a lot of references to other movies. Don Mancini has done his research. Now, he, he knows his John Waters aesthetic. And we also have John Waters having a, um, a cameo role, you could call it, as a paparazzi in Seed of Chucky. But um, he, I have a feeling Don Mancini, and I've noticed that a lot in season one, is utilizes a lot of cinematographic elements in a way and in a stylistic language that Pedro Almodovar would do, with colors, with how scenes are edited, with, with just the aesthetic, 
it's a very particular type of aesthetic. So I, f I felt like there was quite a bit of uh, Pedro Modovar there as well, which returns for season two. Now, season two, episode one is entitled Halloween 2 or The Return, something like that, which it begins with a Halloween episode. We had a Halloween episode last season, which was awesome. That episode was to die for, literally, because, you know, a couple of people died. But um, we start off with Halloween and we have the Chucky insignia popping up like we did in season one, every beginning of the show has different pumpkins turning or different elements. In this case, it was carved pumpkins to form the name Chucky and all the pumpkins had a Chucky face carved on them. We find out later on that Jake carves the face of Chucky uh, on a pumpkin. Now, there's a lot of cinematographic references, little Easter eggs planted throughout the first episode. And so when... Now, Jake is at this point orphan. Um, Devin is as well. And they're in different foster homes. Um, we see them short at the beginning. And it's such a cute moment where they kind of want to kiss, but Jake is scared. He's moving to another town. His foster parents are in the car waiting. They're looking at him. Jake doesn't want them to know that he's gay. So he's on, on the port, on Devin's porch, about to say goodbye and said, I would kiss you, but I don't want to because they don't know. And Devin is like, yeah, okay. Super sad. Jake leaves. So um, in the car is a little kid who talks like Robin from Batman and Robin from the 60s. Like, Holy moly, holy potato chips, holy this, holy that, right? He's always like talking like Robin. And Jake is like Batman to him, becoming like his older brother. So they sip in the car. Uh, the car is leaving. Devin loses it, starts running after the car and yells Jack's name. Jack says to the to his foster parents, stop the car, stop the car. He jumps out, runs back and they kiss. And Devin is like, oh my God, now they know you're gay. He's like, I don't care. It was, oh my heart. It was really, really Beautiful. Now, some people, of course, already started saying, usually the straight men, and then they say something like, yeah, I'm not feeling the chemistry between them. I'm not against gay people or anything like that. But it's just like since, you know, the tension between the two in the first season, while it was building up to that, are they going to get together or not? That worked. But now that they're together and it's official, like the chemistry is not working. So some people have said that, usually straight men. Um, well, I think the chemistry between them is working. What I do feel is different is these kids are like in their puberty right now, like the actual real actors in real life, and they grow real fast. Like they look much older now. It's just a year later. Pardon me, but they already look much more mature. I don't know, you know, Kids' physiognomies change a lot in, in those years. Like, they they morph so much more quickly than they do later on when they get a little bit older. Then you start changing slower. Um, so they, they look older now. And so a little bit less youthful. Devin still pulls it off. Jake looks a little bit more... He's kind of... He was this kind of skinny teenage boy in the last series. Now, I've followed what all the actors have been doing throughout the summer. They've been posting on Twitter and social media. And I've seen that Jake, while they were shooting in particular uh, season two, he was in the gym a lot. He was like pumping iron. He was like building up, buffing up. And I was like, oh, yeah, I get it. You want to have a career in Hollywood and you want to have the ripped body. But my advice to you is stay a kid as long as you can, because once you're out of that you know, there's always time for you to buff up and become a beefcake or whatever you want to look like once you're a little bit older, because Hollywood is always going to have a place for you. You know, if you're if you're ready to be in skimpy underwear and showing your ripped muscles, you know, when you're when you're older, that's fine. But what is hard is to maintain a really, really like childlike teenage appearance. Preserve that for as much as you can is my tip. Uh, so. Jake didn't really do that. He was buffing up all summer. Like, we all saw it on social media. So he comes across as a little bit more like a man. You know, he's still a kid, but he's more manly now. Um, Devin is still a kid. And this is what I think is putting people a little bit off. Uh, they've just, well, 
matured, matured, physically matured differently. And that has nothing to do with the character, but rather with the actual real actors in real life. So that's something I've noticed. I still think the chemistry between them is good. It's just that Jake all of a sudden looks older than Devin. <laughs> and it's like a little bit like off-putting. You know, they still both look super young. Don't get me wrong. But Jake just is a little bit more like, and the hair is a little bit more cut. He's a little bit more, you know, in gay terms, he's playing a little bit more the mask for mask. <laughs> And Devin is just like being a kid. So there's that slight issue that I'm having. Still, the chemistry between them for me is working. It's just the appearances that are not. Now, referencing the movies, uh, Chucky, you little rascal, Chucky calls uh, Jack, Jake. And he also calls Devin on the night of Halloween. And we have our first reference. Now, first of all, it's Scream. So it's Ghostface calling you know, saying, are you home alone? You know, and and Jake looks at on, on the phone is like, wait, it's an anonymous caller. Who are you? Now, the fact that he doesn't remember Brad Dourif's voice as Chucky is a little bit scary. I'm like, what drugs were you taking, girl? Because like, I would remember immediately uh, <laughs> Chucky's voice. But anyway, uh, Jake and Devin both don't seem to remember his voice, but they're like, who is this? Who is this? And then Chucky's like, is Tamara there? Is Tamara there? Now, this is referencing another horror uh, saga, Strangers, uh, which I'm not particularly familiar with. I mean, I've watched it, but it's not kind of like, it's not the type of horror movie that I would go back to and watch it again. So we got Scream and Strangers all in one go. Something, something, nobody really, I don't know, I've watched maybe 10 reviews online. Nobody really caught this reference. At a certain point, Chucky comes into... Um, Lexi's house with a bomb in his hand <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I mean it's it's gruesome but it's super funny and as hostage he has Jake's new stepbrother or little brother right and he sits on the couch with this self-made bomb and he's like I want to kill all three of you together Devin Jake and Lexi, as soon as Lexi comes... Now, Lexi's upstairs. She's not down yet. Lexi's, like, doing some drugs, cracking some pills for Mama from the bathroom. She's, like, sniffing whatever she can find. And um, and Chucky's sitting on the couch, and he, and he throws this reference, which I'm surprised nobody caught, but it's, like, literally the Scooby-Doo reference of them all. He's looking at J Jake and Devin, and he's like, you know, I would have gotten... Because they're like, you wanted to destroy the whole world with all your Chucky dolls, you know, in season one, but you failed because Andy stopped you. Um, and then he's like, yeah, and I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you pesky kids meddling in my affairs. You know, typical thing that the villains say when they're caught at the end of every Scooby-Doo episode. He pulled that, so we had the Scooby-Doo reference. Other references I found, well, Halloween 2, obviously Michael Myers. Um... Bride of Chucky was referenced. Batman and Robin was referenced with the holy moly, the little kid keeps saying it. We got Twin Peaks references. One of the Twin Peaks references is particularly subtle. We've seen the Twin Peaks references woven throughout season one, especially in Jake's room with the zigzag black and white uh, Twin Peaks um, red room floor or the Black Lodge floor. Now in season two, very interesting, subtle reference. When Lexi uh, and her sister and their mom, the ex-mayor, who's now running to become mayor again after all the shenanigans that she went through in the first uh, series, her husband also died, but she doesn't really care about that. <laughs> She's moving on. So they're sitting at the shrink's office. And if you notice, so it's Lexi on one side, the mother on the other in between is uh, is... Lexi's sister, I forget her name. She is looking into the, not into the camera, but like towards the shrink. She has a red curtain behind her and she's sitting on a low couch, just like Laura Palmer it sits in the red room, Twin Peaks. And, you know, when the shrink is asking about Chucky and about who Chucky was, you know, she says, you know, Chucky was full of secrets. This is so, this is literally a conversation happening in the red room, unfolding in Chucky season two, in front of a red curtain. And I'm like, oh my god, this reference is oh so delicious. Now the shrink, this older lady, 
one doth wonder, how is she connected to all of this? Because, I mean, she has all of these brilliant ideas that seem a little too coincidental to be coincidental. Like, she has a Tiffany doll ready to give to the kid. Then, once Chucky, you know, manages to kind of trick the little Jake's new brother to be his hostage to come home to Lexi's house with the bomb that he made, he actually makes the bomb explode, but it's all happens too late so jake and devin and lexi survive but unfortunately the little kid passes away that's some badass stuff like to kill off like a six or seven year old in a bomb explosion that's like that's brutal like literally brutal and then as the explosion happens with the green methane we see the face of chucky in the gas expanding into the world i mean gruesome but hilarious at the same time so now of course the cops and the whole world thinks that the kids made this bomb on their own and it's their fault that uh, jake's little stepbrother passed away obviously the kids don't dare say that it was chucky because they think nobody will believe them now they go to the shrink where the same shrink that gave the tiffany doll to lexi's sister and they say hey um the, like the cops are there whoever is there you know some officer responsible for, I guess, deciding where to put these kids, juvenile, whatever it is, court, whatever, prison, we don't know. The The shrink says, well, I have a better idea. You know, they are just kids. They didn't mean to do this. You can't really treat them like they're real criminals. They are underage after all. So I would suggest that you take them uh, to uh, another facility with the nuns, like a sort of a orphanage school for... I don't know it's like a Christian house where you where you get reformed in some sort of shape or form, but it's also an orphanage. And so, you know, send them there to teach them a lesson. And on their way there, they realize that that's the orphanage where Charles grew up. So they're go they're being sent as prisoners literally to Chucky's turf. And of course, the second they arrive, a nun greets them. Everything looks super psycho. It's like they're entering an asylum or a prison. And right after that, also a box arrives with Chucky in it. <laughs> Chucky knows. So again, really, really weird kind of um, coincidence that the shrink again was involved in connecting Chucky with the kids because the shrink gave Tiffany to the kids. Now the shrink is sending the kids to the place where Charles grew up when he was a boy, when he was still alive, when he was not a doll yet. And of course, we see a box, UPS or somebody delivers a box, well, not UPS, because I don't think this got sponsored by them, but some, some carrier delivers a, a box the size of a Chucky doll. We don't know what doll is inside. Maybe it's Glenn or Glenda. Maybe it's Chucky. Maybe it's Tiffany. We don't know, but we do know that Glenn and Glenda are going to be a part of this movie. Now, what I find very fascinating and super awesome was the moment when Chucky, when he did his prank phone call a la Scream, Ghostface, and, and Jake said, like, you're a homophobe. <laughs> you're a homophobe. You're, like, you're talking against gays. And then Chucky's like saying, no, I'm not. I respect all genders. Like, he kills everybody. But he has a gender fluid kid. And this issue has been addressed in season one and where he said to Jake, no, don't worry, Mike, you know, like, I understand you because Jake is gay, right? He's like, no, my kid, you know, is like gender fluid because Glenn or Glenda, we don't know if Glenn wants to be Glenda or Glenn. Um, and now in episode one of season two, we repeat this concept where Chucky is like this brutal killer who has no heart and no soul and is ready to conquer the world with his shenanigans. But... He's like, but I, I respect, <laughs> I respect all the gays out there. And I thought, oh man, that was so cool. I mean, it makes, it makes a gay kid heart flutter because it's just, you know, Don Mancini, the creator of Chucky, he's also gay. So like he went through a lot in his youth, obviously we can see from, from how he's like kind of managing the show and, and the Chucky movies. And, and the fact that he keeps bringing back the respect towards the gay community is really, really awesome. I think that's something that doesn't happen enough in horror, and I applaud it. I also applaud the fact that his horror is comedic. Uh, it has really fun comedic timing. It's very slapstick in many cases, which doesn't go down very well with a lot of people because they prefer to have it brutally scary, like Chucky has to be the monster. I'm like, no, I think it's much cooler that Chucky 
is funny, surreally comedic, and yet he's still a killer. And yet he's still going to get you when you least expect it because, well, bottom line, he is cuckoo. But he's funny and he's fun to be around. And like Tiffany says, you know, when he loves you most is when you should be the most worried because he probably wants to kill you when he really loves you. <laughs> Which is like, you know what I mean? That whole concept is is so beyond abstract. It's amazing. Um, oh, yeah, Tina. It's like a rosemary baby type of monastery. Tyler says, good old Catholic reform school, right? And, um, oh, Anthony, I just got a, a good guy doll from, from Trick or Treat Studios. Oh, congrats. Amazing. Uh, my good guy doll is in the other room because we're doing, we're doing Seed of Chucky Chucky now because like he's a, he's badass and we need to kind of give him that, give him that badass. Oh my God, Chucky, what's up with your hair? Hold on. I mean, look at, wait, did you, yeah, you want to do the, you want to be badass like this now? All right. <laughs> He's like, whatever, girl. Okay. So wonderful, wonderful moments. Um, no. What I find fascinating is that the Chucky dolls between them are all shady to each other. <laughs> so as Brad Dorif or the OG Charles spreads out his soul into other bodies or other dolls, they kind of start bickering amongst each other. You know, it's not like a unity. It's not like this hive mentality where everybody just follows the leader, that first soul. No, they kind of, they're like, yeah, okay, we got this purpose. We want to conquer the world. Like they have this agenda, the secret plan that we don't know yet. Uh, but amongst them, they're like, you're a bitch. No, you're a bit. No, you're a bit. You know what I mean? And that kind of makes it so refreshing to me. You know, I'm sick and tired of these jump scare horror movies. Like most horror movies nowadays that are very popular, that become very popular, are not very psychological. They're very, very jump scare based. And there's not much of a story really to them, except it's scary. And I get really tired of that very, very easily. So I need some sort of depth. It doesn't all have to be jump scares. Uh, I like to have also comedy. Honestly, there's nothing more terrifying than good comedy. Comedy and horror really go hand in hand for me. So yes, a lot of the plot outlining and a lot of the logic and how they go from A to B in certain points of the plot um, is not very <sighs> solid in some cases. There are flaws, but even those flaws make it charming. I don't mind them. I don't mind them at all. I mean, it's a, it's a joy ride. It's a total joy ride. It, like, I really want to see where it takes me. Lexi has grown up as well. They've given her a different hairstyle. Now she has like wavy curly hair. She's a little bit more punk rock. She's a little bit more rebellious. She's high on pot. She's high on what seems to be coke uh, when she's making out with a guy uh, while Chucky kind of enters the house dressed as a ghost. Or was it Chucky? We think it was because it was the voice of Red Dorif, but you never know at this point because we didn't see his face. Um... She is a little bit more rebellious, but then when finally the gang meets up again together, now the episode was around 46 to 50 minutes long, so it went really fast, you know, from Andy flying off a cliff with all the Chuckies at the beginning, sad that it ended so quickly, uh, but then again, they never found his body, so we don't know if Andy's really dead or alive. With Kyle, the same question, we don't know. So if we don't have a body in a horror movie... You know, the good old, oh, Michael Myers fell off the balcony or the porch. And then Dr. Loomis looks down and Michael is gone again. You're not dead. You don't have a body. You're not dead. And in Michael's case, even if you have a body, he's going to stand up later and be alive anyway. Jason Voorhees as well. But Andy disappears. So the truck fell down. It exploded. The Chucky dolls apparently burned. Not all of them. But Andy's body is missing. So is Andy now a victim of Chucky? Is Andy now... Did some Chucky dolls capture Andy and are holding him hostage? Could be. And to torture him like he tortured Chucky a couple of movies ago where he had 
Chucky's head tied up in a box and was torturing him. That could be the case, or Andy's just in hiding, trying to recuperate his strength to then uh, retaliate against Chucky. We don't know, but if we don't have a body, we for sure know Andy's still alive. And I'm glad he is, because he is the OG Andy from, from Chucky. Is he the best actor out there? No. But he's cute. Like, he really has... Uh, it's endearing to see him. I'm so happy every time I see him on screen. He tries to act, you know, the tough guy, and he's, like, hunting down Chucky. But in reality, you see that he's such a softie, and uh, the sweetest softie at that. So it's always really, really endearing to see him. Um, yeah, he ne Tina, he never dies. He never dies. He's a doll. Oh, Chucky never dies, but also Michael never dies. <laughs> never. As a queer woman... Says Madame Pomrose, I thought this episode was mediocre at best. Both my parents were teachers, says Tina, and the minute they got their incentive to retire, they took it uh, gratefully. It's a wild world here. <laughs> Chucky gets real bad, lol. Yes. <laughs> so, mm, mediocre? No, I wouldn't say it was mediocre. It was... A little flat, you know, because it was kind of very, it felt very much like we have to get from A to B within 50 minutes because we have a limited amount of time and we have, I don't know, I think it's going to be 10 episodes. Well, I mean, season one was 10 episodes. No, was it eight episodes? I forgot. No. I forgot. I just like watched the whole thing again. Hold on. Let me check y'all. Does anybody know? Oh, eight episodes? Wait, what? Season one was eight episodes? So did, did they expand season two to ten episodes? Or is season two also going to be limited to eight episodes? Also eight episodes? Oh, eight this time too. Okay. So in that case, think about it. <clears throat> they wanted to really get from A to B right away. So they have still seven episodes to develop this entire arch. Because we, we've all seen the trailers. We know who is going to be the priest in this school, orphanage, whatever it is, reformatory school. Uh, again, Jake's dad? A third twin? Are they triplets? What's going on there? Uh, Devin Sawa is coming back. Uh, no, no, what's his name? The, the actor's name. I think Devin Sawa. Anyway, so there's a lot of this happening. Now, they got the kids to where they want them. Also, very, it reminded me a little bit of Chucky 3, the movie, where uh, Andy, uh, a teenage Andy, was sent to a military school. And then Chucky was kind of hunting him down within the military school, and then it all ended in this gorgeous, gruesome scene at the amusement park, Right. Where Chucky loses like half his face, right? But it reminded me very much of that, like the scene where the, the three kids are now teenagers, right? And they're being sent to this, it's not a military school, but it, it is a reference to Chucky 3. Now, now that they're there, we have seven episodes to go to unfold this storyline. At the pace in which it went, it all happened in episode one, the possibilities and the directions in which this could go are endless. There was a slower buildup in season one. Season two feels quicker paced. Usually when a season is so quicker paced right off the bat, it means that they have a lot to get to and uh, they want to do it in a proper time. They don't want to waste any time. So to me, this felt like a positive thing. I was like, oh, Oh, good. We're moving. We're moving places because we got to get places. So I'm seeing this as a positive. But I understand, madame, that you are feeling mediocre as well. Because I, quite frankly, season one was so beautiful, so exceptional. And the buildup was so awesome that it did leave us thinking, okay, girl, you got to deliver in season two now, right? Because like we're, our expectations are high. Season two doesn't begin as high as like maybe the cliffhanger of season one promised us or implied it was going to be but i felt good with it i felt it felt it was it was a comfortable horror drama and also coming of age and again the teeny story and the love affairs i personally loved it i enjoyed every minute of it 
the lows and the highs. Because, you know, let's be very clear. There are some shows where the lows, I just, they annoy me. Not here. They didn't annoy. The lows were fine as well. Um, and killing such a young kid in, in the first episode, it was like, damn. And having Chucky's face in the green smoke popping out of the house, I mean, I don't know. To me, epic. Now, some people have issues with Chucky's CGI moments. Again, I had no problem with that either. Um, it's like those people that I think sometimes really want to have like um, everything one-to-one. -one. For example, the Good Guys doll that Trick or Treat Studios made. You know, they're very, very, very specific about how the hair length is, how the how the overalls sit, how the little you know shirt sits. Where's the where's the blue stripe as opposed to the red stripe? Uh, how does the package? How does the box art look? Does it look like Chucky from the first movie, from the second movie? And I'm like, let it go, Elsa, let it go. Because at this point, a lot. Did you notice how awesome? A lot of the dolls, a lot of the Chucky props are actually from Trick or Treat Studios in the TV show. So guess what? When we were buying these dolls before the first season came out, we were thinking, oh, how how close are they going to be to, to the actual movie in case of Seed of Chucky and the Good Guys doll that I also have, like, how close is it going to be to the actual Chucky? But then, because we were thinking about the movies, right? But now that the show is out, that ex those actual dolls <laughs> that we bought are used in the TV show as well. Not for the actual moving puppet, but mostly for like, you know, in standing in the background or for some close-up shots of some inanimate Chucky dolls. They do use the Trick or Treat Studios Chucky dolls. And some of them don't have the special wigs. Some of them have the Trick or Treat Studios wigs on, you know? And that is super awesome because, again, a lot of people back then when those dolls came out were like complaining like they're not really perfect, this and that. I'm like, well, they are perfect now because now those dolls are actually in the show. So it's like you you literally had the doll before it was even in the show. If you bought your good guy doll, I'm not talking about Seed of Chucky, but the good guy doll, if you bought yours right before the show began, it's like that's literally the dolls they use in the show for some scenes, not the actual animatronic Chucky, right? But then some people also have issues with the CGI Chucky when he's kind of talking, he's a little bit more bubbly, a little bit more fisheye. I don't mind that either. Don't forget, Chucky has changed so many times throughout the movies. He has had many... And I'm not talking about um, the... Was it Warner Brothers iteration of Chucky? Uh, with Mark Hamill uh, voicing Chucky. Not, of course, he looks very different there. Also a movie I appreciated, even though you know, it has nothing to do with Don Mancini. Uh, I do prefer our OG Chucky, though, however. But... You know, when we when we watch Curse of Chucky, he has like this bigger head. It's a, it's a different type of body design, um, huge forehead. He, even throughout the first movie, he evolves from this inanimate doll to this guy. You know, this he's turning more into Charles, and he's losing his hair. His eye starts twitching. Like he turns and he morphs into a different creature altogether. So in reality, Chucky's constantly changing, and the fact that some of the CGI Chucky's have these more somewhat puffier faces makes them a little bit more cartoony, but I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I go with the technology in movies has gotten better, says Tina. Mm. Um, Zara says, this was the perfect catch-up episode and nice setup for the season. I agree, Zara. Yeah, it's fantasy horror to me, says Tina. They were good. Uh, MXGX says, luxury Chucky unboxing. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> Tina says, really? Technology in movies has gotten better. So, now, they arrive to this place. I believe that uh, the shrink lady, uh, the older shrink doctor, she is... Is she evil or is she good? Or is she trying to make her own experiments? Or is she somehow connected to Tiffany? Is she Tiffany's mom? Aunt? Is she obsessed with Bride of Chucky the movie and maybe she wasn't collecting all dolls like she says but she was collecting just Tiffany dolls maybe she wants to find her way to Tiffany and she's sending the kids to this school or reformatory whatever it is because she wants to lure Tiffany in I don't know the shrink is sus to me 
whether because she has a good motive or a bad motive, but she is playing with fire. Let me tell you, she's playing with fire. Eh, sister, Debbie says, maybe, but mm, I don't know, because Jennifer Tilly's real sister, uh, or sisters, sister, definitely one, maybe even two, are going to be in the show. And she's not one of the sisters. <laughs> she's definitely, you know, her, like Tiffany's, I mean, Jennifer's real, real sister is going to be in the show. Um acting as her sister. Again, Meta, we're breaking the fourth wall yet again. Uh, who knows? Yeah, yeah, but the, but the shrink was not Meg Tilly. The, the shrink was somebody else. Yeah, the shrink was not... The shrink was not Meg Tilly, y'all. I mean, did they put, like, prosthetics on her? Was the shrink Meg Tilly? But if, if the shrink was Meg Tilly... They did a hell of a prosthetics job on her. Why would they do that? She didn't look like her at all. Like, why would they invest all that? Why would they, like, hire? Oh, because she's hiding her identity? Madame says, she's obviously sus. Bad writing all the way this episode. Sorry, not sorry. Love Chucky, but can't deny it. All right, Madame. Well, hey, you know, <laughs> if if you don't like the writing, you don't like the writing. Um... The writing could have been a little bit tighter, but it was fine for me. The issue I had was, you know, the only part that felt contrived to me and didn't work realistic. And again, this is a problem that I have with Jake or the actor. Uh, he, when, when Chucky called him and Devin both on like video call, Devin was handling it like acting wise, like asking questions, being scared. But Jake was like... The actor, act, he was overacting. It, he he, he was a little cringe. I didn't feel like he was like really being scared. He was more like, oh, what's going on? You know, it's it's like this kind of when you fake it with friends and you act. He was giving me that sort of acting there. Um, and I thought, why is it so weirdly choppy in that scene? You know, it's, it's the split screen moment. You know what I'm talking about? When they split the screen. And in the middle, you see like Chucky's phone POV moment when he's like kind of sneaking into Lexi's room and she's making out with that boy. And then on this side of the split screen, we have Jake. And on that side, we have Devin. Um... Yes, Zara. He, yes, Jake did reference Jennifer Tilly in The Bride of Chucky in this movie. Yes, we just spoke about it a couple of minutes ago. We did. And Madame says, uh, Jake is as good as... Um... Oh my God, the shade. Jake is... A good is as good an actor as Kristen Stewart. So Madame Pomme Rosé just delivered the shade, y'all. <laughs> I mean, Devin is good though. Yeah, Madame Devin is definitely good. I mean, Kristen Stewart. You know, I loved her in Twilight, but then that it ends there. Has anybody seen her in uh, Spencer? Uh, Diana. And she was nominated for an Oscar. I mean, <laughs> what? Anyway, child. Anyway, child. Moving. On. So, um, girl, <laughs> I know Chucky. I know you're upset, but don't you worry. You're gonna get your Oscar soon enough. <laughs> so I'm. I don't know about you guys. Let me know in the comment section down below. But are you looking forward to episode two? I'm so looking forward to episode two. Of course, this year for us. You know, Halloween lovers and macabre lovers and horror lovers. It couldn't have been a better, a better Halloween season. I mean, we get Wednesday Adams, the series. We get Chucky, the series. We get Hellraiser. We got the monsters from Rob Zombie. A lot of people didn't like it. It was a little, but you know what? I enjoyed it. I still enjoyed it. Um, what else do we get? Oh, we got Hocus Pocus 2. It was okay. Granted, but, you know, um, we're going to get Halloween Ends with Michael Myers. I mean, this is the Halloween year. 2022, baby, all the way. What in October? Oh, my gosh. It's going to be so thrilling. Uh, anyway, Debbie says, I hope we get to buy it. It's different this year, how it's broadcast. Oh, the, the show? Hellraiser scares you, Tina? Yeah, it's so beautiful. And I love that somebody said, you know, since Disney is behind it, because it's like Fox or some company that actually Disney owns, right? 
who's doing Hellraiser? Anyway, so Disney owns it. And uh, the fact that the main Hellraiser is a woman this time around, and somebody said, I love the fact that, uh, like, one of the, a female pinhead princess, like the Disney finally gets a horror princess. The pinhead is a Disney princess, y'all, because Disney's producing Hellraiser. I, I, I just found that super funny. Anyway, <sighs> Anthony says, hope Chucky season two tops season one. I mean, season one is so beautiful. It doesn't need to top it. It can it can just be different, you know, and it can give us joy on a totally different level. And it, it might. But hey, no matter what they do with Chucky season two, I think it's still not going to be as bad as some stuff out there. You know what I mean? Like we still get the OG Chucky and that already is a gift in its own. Just my humble opinion. Cause I'm a huge fan. So maybe I am a bit biased, but um, let me have fun for eight weeks. Let me have fun with eight episodes. Let me enjoy, you know, and then we can move on to more depressing topics after that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are about episode one. And if you want to watch episode two, are you looking forward to it or not? And if you've made it thus far, drop a pumpkin in the comments. Thank you. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love and subscribe. Bye. All right, Chucky, we did it. Are you happy? What? What? No, no. No, 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 <laughs> you're not, Chucky, no, no, go down, Chucky, go down, stay there, how dare you.